So we had a new area bonuses Great Hall added to the game. And for a lot of people, they kind of like acknowledged the value of it. But there was some really weird stuff in there. Like, why do we have area bonuses for potion keeps? But what I never really kind of considered in my brain was the ignore defense bonus if you can max it, is probably one of the most overpowered things they've added to the game in such a long time. And that's kind of going to be the topic of this video. So the area bonuses we've got here right now are for specific dungeons, basically the main artifact dungeons. For some crazy reason, they added potion keeps because nobody really knows why. Anyone who really spends any of their medals in potion keeps is doing it because they have nothing better to spend their medals on. And then we have the two primary clan bosses, which is Hydra and the Demon Lord, the traditional clan boss. We didn't really get anything for Doom Tower. We didn't get anything for the Shogun, the Sand Devil. You know, these areas where these area bonuses would have been really valuable, they kind of overlooked those. This was meant to be an extension of the Great Hall. A lot of us who are four-year veterans, we've com completed our Great Hall like ages ago, right? I only really do arena when I have to do it for a tournament or because I particularly want to get another chest but I've even burnt all my medals now so we completed this like ages ago so we needed something to make live arena relevant and also to give us something else to chase so they added area bonuses with live arena and you get the crests here um, ironically enough the bronze medals don't really matter the medal colors just don't really matter beyond you need gold to unlock gold and they also added some new stats in the old way we had hp attack defense crit damage resistance accuracy the new one had speed and ignore defense they also increased the crit damage to 30 percent Whereas in the old one, it was only at 25%. So we got a little bit more bonus stats here. The accuracy and the resistance stayed the same. And the HP and defense stayed the same as well. They were still 20%. So we got 5% more crit damage. We could gain 20 speed. And more importantly, 20% ignore defense. Now, why am I calling out ignore defense as a specific like big deal? Well, there are a lot of champions in the game that have a small amount or a partial amount of ignore defense. Some of them have a lot of defense, ignore defense. Some of them completely ignore defense like Whisper. You know, by now, if you're not in enshrined in the Church of Whisper, what are you doing? There are some champions that just completely ignore defense. But there are very few, there is quite a number of champions now that have quite a lot of ignore defense, but not enough to truly do like zero defense, like true damage. And the difference between a target like having a little bit of defense still in its damage reduction equation versus completely ignoring the target's defense is big. It is massive. We are talking sometimes 50 to 70,000 more damage. And when I was looking at building my Fire Knight hard team, as you can see, I've started working on getting the Fire Knight hard speeds up. I actually didn't take into account how really powerful this is when you can't really depend on things like decreased defense in the team. Now, the champions I want to call out specifically for this are Jorgid, Baron, but mainly Trutraxa. Now, why am I calling these champions out? All of them have an ability that ignores 50% of the enemy's defense. And you might be saying, well, what are you talking about? You talk about getting to true damage. You're nowhere near true damage. True. And this was always the problem with Kutraxa. She could ignore quite a lot of defense, but not enough for it to make her hit really hard. But once you start maxing out your area bonuses, this changes the topic because now you can take a simple math equation of going, well, I base ignore 50%. I can then get Savage. Well, that'll give me another 25%. Now, if you don't know, ignore defense is all additive. So you take all sources of ignore defense, either from artifact sets, skills, um, masteries, passives, all the different forms, and you add it together. If it reaches 100%, you deal true damage. You can't get 125% ignore defense because that's impossible, but it adds together. So we're taking the 50% from the skill, we're then adding it with 25% from Savage, and then a 5% from Cruel. So now we've taken that 50%, we've added 30%. So we're at 80%. And what does the area bonus give us? It actually gives us 20%. So what you end up doing is making your Crutrax's A1 deal true damage. And once it can deal true damage, the damage numbers will increase dramatically. So we can do some basic math here to kind of work this out. We know the multiplier for Crutrax's A1 is 0 0.8 with four separate attacks. It has an inbuilt ignore defense of 50%. So that's where we're going to start. If we were to have a build of 5,600 attack with 200% crit damage, 
It's an A1, so we can apply a methodical 10% bonus, 5% for Heart of Glory, 6% to bring it down, and 25% for Weaken, because she provides her own Weaken on her A2 with a guaranteed extra turn, so why wouldn't you use that? And we also have the books at 25%. So if we assume we're running without decreased defense, just as a comparison here, you can't always guarantee that in your Fire Knight hard team, for example, you can get a decreased defense. You might be if you can run Farrakhan, but a lot of people might struggle to get that in their team. So what we can do is we can take the defense of Fire Knight, which is 6,726. 6,726 is the defense of Fire Knight hard 10. We can take that number, we can pass it through the damage um, reduction equation, taking its defense, working out how much actual damage reduction it's going to generate, then apply 50% ignore defense. So if we do that, we end up at a predicted damage outcome of 37,073 damage. That's assuming we also have an increased attack buff. You might not always have that, but let's just assume for, for this testing purposes, we do have that. Now, as you can see, every 10% ignore defense we add, we increase our damage exponentially. Ignore defense, the more you have of it, the more powerful it becomes because you are trying to break the bell curve. Damage reduction works very much like a bell curve. The first 1,000 is much more, it gives you a lot of damage reduction. The last 1,000 gives you not very much. It's diminishing returns. So what you end up having is between around about 2,000 defense and around about 6,000 defense, you have a natural curve that you can start seeing it tailing off. So if you inverse the process and you're working your way back down to zero, you can see the lower the defense falls, the more damage reduction you're actually getting off, which means the more damage you're doing. That's kind of like a rough analysis of how damage reduction works in the game. I should probably do a full video on it if I've not done one already. But we can see here, if we start with 50%, this is if we had no area bonuses, we had no Savage Cruel, we literally just was using Crutraxus A1 as it was, it would do about 37,000 damage on the, to the total combined of, e of all the hits, right? The full damage ability. So if we were to apply, for example... Savage and Cruel. That would give us 30% more def more ignore defense. That would take us up to 80%. That would drop the damage reduction down from 76% to 50%. It's still pretty substantial even at 80% ignore defense. So we would gain 34% damage from 70%. This is a cumulative gain. So how much does 50 to 60 give us? That's 21, 27, 34, 39 to demonstrate that it's an exponential kind of growth. But actually, but that one Savage Cruel is giving us 107% more damage. So this is where Savage Cruel is very valuable. If you can't get decreased defense, you almost double your damage with only that 30% ignore defense. But here's where it gets crazy. This is where I didn't really put enough stock. Area bonuses will get us to true damage. And look at the damage difference between 90% and 100%. It's 44%. But the actual damage difference between her base build and the final build is over 300% more damage because you're now doing true damage. If we compare the damage numbers to from say from the 100% to the 80%, how much does this area bonus actually give us? Well, we can take this number here and we can divide it with this and we can say that area bonus doubles your damage because you're hitting true damage. It doubles your damage. Now, this is not even just finite hard. We're talking um, dragon, we're talking um, hydra. That A1 will ignore defense across the board if you put her in Savage Cool because it's a 50% base. That 20% bonus adds 100% more damage. So when you're making the decisions about what should you upgrade in area bonuses first, it should be ignore defense after you've done speed. It is by far the most valuable stat. And that might seem obvious to some people, but I know that a lot of people wouldn't really think that. Think more crit damage, right? That's going to give me more damage. No, this ignore defense is much more powerful on champions that have already inbuilt ignore defense. That's kind of a crucial factor. If you can't hit this true damage, then you can see the ignore defense, right? Say like you could reach Savage Cruel. Let's just assume that we're not running Crutraxa and we're on Savage Cruel. Well, you're gonna gain about the same amount of damage as crit damage, right? Ignore defense is gonna give you the same if you don't have any inbuilt ignore defense. You might wanna run someone like Hefrak. Hefrak has like a built-in 15%, right? So you would start with Savage Cruel at 30 plus 15%. So you start at 45 and then you'd go to 55, 65%. Well, that would give you more than crit damage. So if you have even a little bit of ignore defense in your skill kit, you probably want to prioritize ignore defense. 
So yeah, I, it's just one of those things that I really wasn't thinking about it until I was having conversations about Finite Hard, where someone was saying, oh, well, I don't need to worry about damage reduction for Katraxa. And I was like, what? what are you talking about? And it was the, the realization that this fully maxed out is going to give you true damage on any champion that has 50% ignore defense. So if any champion that you use has a 50% in their skill. So for example, another champion we could talk about here is Wukong's A2. This will deal true damage if you are using it with a um, with the area bonuses. The other thing is you can artificially give your champions ignore defense through the medium of crushing rend if they're six star awakened. You know, I released a video talking about should you have crushing rend or phantom touch with Whisper. Well, she doesn't really have any innate ignore defense on her A3, but if you give her 35% from the crushing rend then you give her savage cruel that's 65 percent then you give her the area bonuses you're at 85 percent now if you can find yourself 15 percent somewhere somehow in the future maybe they add it into different contexts or maybe they'll release blessing stats that give you ignore defense you're you're really starting to see how the layering of these area bonuses and things are actually really strong so even like if you had someone like hefrak as i was talking about a little bit of ignore defense um, for example, she is Hefrak is Undead Hordes or is it Night Night Revs? I always I always mess these up. Is it under it is Demon Spawn? So when we look at Hefrak's A2, it ignores 15% of the target's defense. So 15 plus crushing rend on a high level, which would be 350, that gives you 50%, the base you need. Then you can apply your Savage Cruel, gets you to 80%, and then the area bonuses. So realistically, a six-star fully awakened champion on high-level content only needs 15% to deal true damage. And there's quite a lot of champions in the game that has incidental small amounts of ignore defense, right? Someone like Shemnath, I'm pretty sure on the A3, um, ignores 20%. This will deal true damage if it was fully awakened. It does kind of like make awakening even more powerful, which I know a lot of people will be unhappy with but that is the reality that we live in someone like garrel i'm pretty sure in the a2 uh, ignores 30 percent so a fully awakened garrel will do true damage to high-end content so yeah basically the tldr guys is ignore defense it might actually be the most powerful overpowered area bonus of them all by quite a margin so don't sleep on ignore defense prioritize it especially on champions that you use that has a little bit of ignore defense because if you can breach to true damage the potential compared to without it is substantially higher and much more than the 30 percent that you would get from crit damage there you go guys a little bit of a brief intro a bit of math there as well we always like to do a bit of math in this channel let me know in the comments below did you already know this were you already prioritizing ignore defense or has this video made you reconsider where you put your live arena medals i myself i'm currently trying to grind out the ignore defense the speed and the crit damage of my finite so that i can finally put together a competent finite hard team at the moment it's a little bit in limbo because i have to kind of finally agree to break my gnoot build but We'll see where we get to uh, when I get back from Vegas. But there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was of interest, and I'll see you in the next video.